Podcast. I'm Jason Gilbo at jgilbo11. With me is Nick Rodriguez at N Rodriguez DFS, breaking down tonight's big Wednesday slate and looking like a good one. Uh, a lot of high totals to take a look at and um, looking, I mean, all but one game. Uh, or Sorry, all games are over 200 tonight, so they're looking pretty solid. Um, blowout concern, we're looking at Philly. Um, being down nine and a half points as a spread. We're looking at the Warriors being favored by 13. Outside of that, not too much worry. Um, where are you looking at a lot tonight? Do you have a few games that you're really going to be targeting? Yeah, there's definitely a few games I'm looking at. One of them is Cleveland-Sacramento. It's a 216 and a half total. And Cleveland's only favored by five and a half points. I think that's definitely one game to target. And the other game I'm looking at is the Clippers versus OKC. That's a 217 game total, and OKC's favored to win by five and a half. So those are the two games I'm really looking at tonight. Yeah, I'm definitely with you there. and uh, They're going to be competitive, high-scoring games on both sides. Both, I mean, all four teams you mentioned right there are going to have value, have high skill, high price players that you can pair up with. Um, a couple other games I like, I like Charlotte, New Orleans, um, 209 total there. And I also like Philly and Houston. I think it's a great GPP game just because Houston has that big 114 total you can target. Um, and Philly, I mean, a lot of upside on the team, but they're all pretty cheap as far as value goes. Yeah, definitely. Um, Oka first out, we, we were talking about before the show. Some value can open there. And I'm sure more injuries will pop up from the Sixers throughout the day. Yeah, yeah. I mean, as we've been used to for the last week or so, it's just been injury crazy from like 6 o'clock on. But uh, a couple other games that are interesting to me, um, you know, you're looking at Dallas, Detroit, Phoenix, New York, Milwaukee, Miami, Boston, Memphis. They kind of lack the total, but there's still a lot of of values in those games. Yeah, definitely. And the one game I'm looking at for value in particular is Miami-Milwaukee. Not just because Miami's on the back of my wall, but I really like the plays like Luol Deng, Dwayne Wade, and I think that's going to be a close game and possibly overtime. Yeah, I mean, they've, they've had some close battles before, and like you said, I mean, that total, it's it's not attractive in comparison, but Milwaukee, all their starters always play 35-plus minutes. I mean, he, you know where that, that value is coming from, so I do like them a lot. Exactly. Look at, looking at injuries at point guards tonight, um, Brandon Knight, questionable coming in and he returned to practice um he would kind of throw a wrench into the back uh, guard rotation that we've been used to um mike conley is out nor is cole questionable um chalmers has been he'll be the big beneficiary tonight even in a tough matchup against boston um i mean he played what you said for all 40 minutes or something like that when when um conley was out last game yeah he played 40 minutes and pretty tough matchup against cleveland and he exceeded value, and with a 5,200 price tag on DraftKings, I think he can hit value again tonight without a problem. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we've kind of faded point cards against Boston in the past, but if you're going to get 40 minutes and a high-tempo matchup with basically seven players on your, on your team, uh, you're going to be in play. As far as the New Orleans backcourt goes, uh, Norris Cole, he did play. He was a game-time decision last time out at a big game, um, going 23-7-6. It's him. If he does play, I do like him too. Um, but that backcourt, it's pretty much him and Drew Holiday um, controlling everything. Exactly. It's him, Drew Holiday, and then Tony Douglas, who didn't do a whole lot last game. Yeah, I mean, he was kind of on the radar of a punt play. Uh, played 20 minutes, which was still solid. If Cole ends up sitting tonight for some reason, then you could bump Tony Douglas up. Um, he would probably play in the 30s for minutes because they'd really have only two healthy guards. Exactly. He becomes a must-start play if Cole's out. Uh, Looking at other injury things, not much at point guard. Um, There's a lot of top-end options tonight. I mean, you got Westbrook, Curry, Paul. Um, Curry, not a big fan of him tonight, just tougher matchup against Utah. I don't think that upside's quite there for the price, uh, even though the high total is. And the blowout concern, I probably don't see him playing the fourth quarter. Yeah, um, Curry with the low game total, like you mentioned, I'm probably fading him especially on a slate where you got Russell Westbrook and Chris Paul going head-to-head. These two guys have put up big numbers when facing each other. So what I would do today is get a hat, get a paper, put their names on it, and just choose. And whichever one you pick, that's the guy you go with. That's how I look at this situation today. 
Yeah, I mean, there's not much tossing up between the two. I mean, there is a sizable difference. I think the discount on DK there, uh, 9,800 to to um, 10,800 for Westbrook. I think that's a pretty good discount. I think I prefer Paul a little bit more there, but FanDuel it's a little closer. Exactly. If you can save a thousand dollars between these two guys, they have the same upside tonight. I'd go Paul as well. Yeah. But if you're you're stuck in the decision, just flip a coin or draw their names from a hat. Yeah, I mean, both are just huge upside guys. The cash game consistency has always been there. Um, there are some cheaper options I do like. I do like Kemba Walker tonight. I like Drew Holiday. Um, even Rondo. I think Rondo's a solid GPP guy. Not a lot of people will be on him. And like you mentioned, I mean, that's a, a big total game, um, and it's a close one. And Rondo always seems to show up for these big games. Yeah, you actually stole my tournament play. I think – I'm not sure his price on FanDuel, but 7900 on DraftKings I think is a, a steal for him with the production he's been putting up with the Kings this season. And I think he's a top guy with that game total. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a good point because, like you mentioned, the, the price difference between the two sites is pretty big. Kind of over overpriced on FanDuel, really cheap on DK. And uh, in that same game – uh, Kyrie Irving, I think, is a great play in all formats. Great matchup against the Kings. Still cheaper on FanDuel. Still not that bad. He's still below 8K. Um, I love Irving in all formats. Yes, yeah, so, um, great play, great matchup. And he's been hitting value. Yep. That's what you look for, especially in the cash game. Definitely. Uh, looking at some value, guys, um, we talked about Chalmers. Also, Jared Bayless um, playing bigger minutes. Averaging 32 over the last five games with Michael Carter Williams out. Tougher matchup, but definitely a cheaper price tag. He is cheaper than Mario Chalmers there on DK, so um, he's definitely worth a look. But I think both in tougher matchups, I still both think are pretty fine just because they're playing heavier minutes at that price. Exactly, but between the two, I'd go with Chalmers. I just think he has more upside. But if you want to play it safe, I think Bayless is a nice cash game play if you're looking to spend on other positions. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, Chalmers, he's more heavily relied on for offense. And, you know, with that team, Memphis doesn't have a lot of scores. As far as Milwaukee, I mean, it's Middleton, it's Parker, it's um, Greek Freak there, Monroe. So, I mean, you got other options. So, um, anyone else you're looking at here tonight? Yes, I'm looking down lower in the 3K range. I like Jose Calderon quite a bit. He's getting a lot of minutes. Um, 3,700 is a great punt play if you're trying to fit all those superstars in. And he gets an excellent matchup against Phoenix, who is top five in most fantasy points allowed in the season. So I think Calderon's a nice punt play. Yeah, I mean, if you're going stars and scrubs, that is a good point out. Um, very cheap. If you're trying to fit up for guys, you know, like Anthony Davis, like James Harden into one lineup, that's, that's a good call right there because, I mean, 25, you know, fantasy points at that price against Phoenix is definitely not unreasonable. Exactly. And the other guy to watch out for is Tony Douglas. We just got to wait and see what happens with Norris Cole. Yep. Went over to shooting guard tonight and uh, some injury news that we've kind of been used to. Eric Gordon is out. We mentioned that backcourt being pretty, uh, pretty, you know, small, which is Holiday, Cole, and Douglas. Um, other than that, I mean, it's not much. We're looking at top options of James Harden. Um, I know you like Dwayne Wade. I like Dwayne Wade for that price tag. Um, I mean, anyone else you really like up top besides those two? Is it just kind of Harden and Wade, and then you're going cheap? Um, you can look at Middleton. I think he can hit value. And two games against the Heat this season, he's averaged 15 points, seven rebounds. So I can see him hitting average. He does have that upside. And maybe a B Nicholas Batum. He's a little too pricey for the inconsistency, in my opinion. But he does have that upside and a good matchup against the Pelicans. Yeah, that's a good call. I always like Batum. And his price is a little bit cheaper on FanDuel, where I like him a little bit more. But, yeah, Batum's always a play just because he doesn't necessarily have to score real points to get you fantasy points, which is always nice. Um, yeah, and like you mentioned, that's a great matchup. I like that game to target a lot, Batum, Kemba especially. Um, I think cheaper shooting guards are starting to feel a little bit bad about because you don't like a ton. Um, looking cheap, I like Aaron Aflalo. A great matchup against Phoenix. That backcourt defense is horrendous. Um, 
I thought we were coming off a down game against the Nuggets, but playing big minutes, averaging 38 over the last four games there. Um, I would have to say I'd be turning back to him again. I'm not going to let the bad game against Denver scare me off. Exactly, especially with a lot of people probably going to fade him. He's at a good price tonight, especially on DraftKings 4,500. So I'll take my chance with him. Yeah, definitely. Um, looking at other guys, um, Contavious Caldwell Pope kind of back on the radar for me. Um, playing big minutes again, 37, 37, 36, and 36 over the last four games. Um, finally starting to work things back in more scoring-wise. Um, 16 points in the last game against Portland. Nice matchup against Dallas. Um, if he gets those minutes at that price, I, I like him for value tonight. Yeah, definitely. He For value play, I think he's a guy to look at. And the other guy is Avery Bradley. He's 4,800 on DraftKings. He's hit value in eight out of his last 10 games. Um, tough matchup against Memphis. Um, going Probably Tony Allen guarding him, but 20 points is definitely reachable for him. Definitely. And I guess one guy that we've kind of glossed over is Devin Booker. Um, I mean, the guy was down for a lot, a lot of uh, you know the time after the All-Star break there, but he's really bounced back. Um, he's averaging 23-4 and four over the last five games. The Mints have been there. He would be if Knight, when Knight comes back, I still think Booker's the safer play, but Booker's still at that price tag. It hasn't really come back up, averaging 32 fantasy points over the last five games against a Nick backcourt that's been struggling of late. Yeah, 5,300, that price tag is great. Major upside. I can't believe I skipped past him, <laughs> just like you did. Yeah, I just, I, I've been doing it the last week, and I've come the end of the night, I'm like, how the hell did I not play Devin Booker again? I'm glad you mentioned him. <laughs> but any other guys you're looking at? I mean, Evan Turner been interesting. His values um, been a little bit up and down of late, but still he's been pretty solid on DK where he's a cheap shooting guard. Yeah, he's definitely another guy to look at. And I'm looking at the 3K range and nobody that really sticks out to me unless injury news pops out throughout the day. Yeah, I'm with you there. I think you're better off staying put in that Aaron Aflalo, Bradley, Caldwell Pope range. Or James Harden, of course. Oh, of course, yeah. Uh, looking at small forward tonight, not a lot of injuries to look at. Matt Barnes is probable. Um, that's going to put P.J. Harrison um, and Stevenson back down a notch there. Um, Stevenson I actually don't mind still. I still think 25 minutes is about where you're going to get just because Barnes plays the three and the four. Um Especially if Boston decides to go small, which I could see them doing tonight. So keep an eye on that. But it's it's pretty top heavy. There's a lot of small forward options, which we haven't been used to in the past. Yeah, um, looking at this, you got Durant, LeBron, Giannis, Carmelo. These are all great plays. All have good matchups, with the exception of Giannis, maybe against a good Miami defense, but. He's been playing great. He can easily hit value as well tonight. Yeah, do you think with that price jump, though, I mean, up over 9K on FanDuel, he's 8,700. Basically, you pay a grand more, and you got yourself LeBron James against the, the uh, Kings. Giannis's upside seems a little bit capped in tonight's matchup. I prefer LeBron and Durant over Giannis, but if people are playing him, I can see why with how shorthanded the Bucks are. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, with his production, he's, you know you're going to get 38 minutes out of him. You know he's going to be out there producing points. Um, I do like Melo as well in a nice matchup against the, the uh, Suns there. And Melo, I mean, extremely consistent. I mean, coming off another 30-point game, he's averaging 26 and, and 8 over the last five. The minutes, I mean, you want to talk about minutes, he is kind of equaling Giannis there, 39 on average over the last five. And you can save some money by going with Carmelo. Yeah, he's kind of a discount from the top options, and he doesn't have Durant James upside, but, I mean, a consistency in cash games enough to, to help save you a little bit, but um, I still think, yeah, I mean, you're looking at James and Durant as being the top guys. Definitely, and between the two, do you have a preference? Between James and Durant? Yes. I'm leaning more towards Durant, um, but I definitely can see attacking LeBron with the, with the Kings, but... I just look, uh, Durant, Westbrook, those are the only two options that they have scoring-wise. Cavs, they got Kyrie, they got Love, they got James. Sometimes James likes to take his foot off the gas every now and then. 
Durant never. I mean, the guy's averaging over 60 <laughs> fantasy points over the last five. Yeah. It's a close call. I'm with LeBron. I think he's going to have his foot on the gas. They, they lost an embarrassing loss the other night to the Grizzlies that were shorthanded and with no stars. So I think he's going to play mad, and we all know what he can do when he's mad. Yeah, if we if we get LeBron in takeover mode, watch out because he'll he'll go off. But <laughs> there's a lot of guys in that six K range. I like I like both small forwards from that Philly and Houston game tonight um, in tournaments. Um, like Ariza, um, been a little bit more consistent of late. He's got that upside. We all know Covington taking on a bigger role with Okafor out. His minutes have gone up a little bit more steadily, 33 on average over the last five, um, averaging 31 fantasy points per game. And I like them. I also like Luol Deng, who I know you like as well. Ben look been consistent as well, kind of overlooked a little bit over the last week, but still producing. Yes, a lot of good options at the 6K range now that you mention it. Any preference you have? Do you like do you still like Deng more in consistency wise? Um I think in a tournament, I'd go Covington, especially if Noel's out. He's going to get a ton of minutes. If he's out, Okafor's already out. His usage rate is going to be through the roof, and he gets a beautiful matchup against the Rockets. Yeah, and then with Houston, I mean, they turn the ball over a ton, and we've seen Covington. His defensive upside's huge. I mean, he had eight steals last time they played Houston, so um, he's a guy, even if his scoring's cut off, he can still rebound and still grab defensive stats. Exactly, especially with their two big men on the on the bench. And fun fact, Covington hit 63 fantasy points in the game earlier this season against Houston. Yeah, I mean, I, he has that <laughs> upside. I mean, we've seen it before, and that would be huge. I, I like him a lot in tournaments. I still think I prefer the other two, just because we've seen Covington drop those dug games. Yes. But, um, speaking of those... the. Philly big men. Uh, Jeremy Grant, um, he's played 35 minutes on average. He plays the four um, when Okafor sits because Noel ships over to the five. I believe Noel's on the on the probable side tonight, I still think, but still keep an eye on him just because he's had the, the injury concerns in the past. But Jeremy Grant will pick up some minutes, and I don't think he's a bad option to get exposure to in this game. No, definitely. The minutes are there. Great matchup. I wish the price was a little cheaper, but He's definitely in play for me as well. Yeah, I think Price, you're right. I think he is a little bit more expensive. Um, and then also Tony Allen. Uh, I, I, he, he was not on my radar at all. Until until Monday or? Until, uh, yeah, what was it? Yeah, Monday. Yeah, um, I didn't expect him to play 34 minutes on Monday coming off an injury, but he's going to get the minutes tonight. And the matchup isn't the best, but he's had success against Boston this season. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the one thing is he's – I you don't expect this guy to score 26 points, but you do expect him to put up defensive stats and in an up-tempo game and rebounding. Boston struggles on rebounding. So I do like Allen a little bit more. And I think, as you mentioned, I think comparing Grant to Allen, you just like that discount there. Oh, for sure. Save close to $1,000. And Allen, I think – has a little more upside. Yeah, definitely. Just a little bit more involved in a, in a shortened, shortened squad there. Um, exactly. Anyone else you think we glossed over? Um, you mentioned Lance Stevenson. I think he's a decent play tonight. Um, his minutes might be a little down, but I think he's still a nice play. Could see him hit around the 20 fantasy point range. And... I don't see any good pump plays as of now. Yeah, I think Stevenson's about as low as I'm going. And um, yeah, I, I do think 25 minutes, 20 fantasy points, 25 fantasy points is right there. The good thing with him is he can play the two and the three. So with a shortened squad there, he'll still get his minutes that we've been seeing. Exactly. And with Conley out, he, he'll probably be Chalmers' backup. That's true. Yeah, that is very true. We've seen him take over the ball handling role a couple times uh, during his career. Looking at power forward tonight, we talked about the Grizzlies. Um, Zach Randolph, doubtful. That means Jermichael Green's going to step in. And I was a bit surprised with his production against a Cavs team that's good down low. Now he gets a matchup against Boston, who struggled against power forwards this season. Yeah, um, I was watching that game. 
he's not the best of players, but he plays hard. And, you know, he – two blocks, four steals. He hustles on the defensive side as well. He's going to fill up that stat sheet. I'm not expecting 50 fantasy points, but 30 is definitely a range for this guy. Yeah, which is just great at that price. I'm not going to be chasing the 50, but I think now you just look at it, it's a great matchup for him to go out and do his thing, uh, rebound well, you know, get some easy putback buckets um, against that Boston front court. And like you mentioned, the defensive stats were there. Exactly, especially that Boston tends to go small ball. Yep. And he's the perfect guy for the small ball, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, because he can shift over to the five, which is nice. Yeah. Look at the top options. I like Van, I like Anthony Davis tonight, uh, coming off a monster 31-10 and 10 game. Um, going up against Charlotte, they really struggle against power forwards. Do you prefer him over Boogie tonight on DK? Definitely. Between the matchup and the discount, I think Davis is a great play. He's taking a bunch of shots, which I mentioned in my article. He's averaging 25 shots in his last two games. So if he hits, let's say, 50% of those shots, that's close to 40 fantasy points already. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, looking at the last game, you know, he did. He shot 62% from the field against Sacramento, 13-21. 11-31 before that against a tough Utah team. Back-to-back games with 50-plus fantasy points. I'm definitely with you there. He's the guy I want to play out of the big men tonight. Um, it just kind of puts a lot of those guys out of play for me, like Draymond Green, like Favors. Cousins a little bit out, out of the range. It's just Davis's territory up there. Yes. Um, tournament play, Cousins for sure. Not a lot of people are going to be on him. And we all know the upside he has, but I think Davis is the safer play tonight. Definitely. Um, then it kind of gets a little, a little weak. I mean, I'm not really on Kevin Love tonight. I'd rather play Kyrie and LeBron. Um, if I'm playing anyone from Cleveland, you take the same stance. Yes. Yeah, I just can't see. I mean, he's been really inconsistent. It's a great matchup, but just his inconsistency is frustrating. I'd rather pay up or just pay down for some cheaper guys. Exactly. And looking down, I am, you can go with David Lee, who's been playing great as of late. Somehow, he doesn't get a whole lot of minutes, but in the minutes he does play, he just fills up that stash sheet. Yeah, his fantasy points per minute, uh, you know, it's through the roof um, in Dallas and I mean, even in 16 minutes against the Clippers, um, 22 fantasy points, 13 and 8. Um, you're kind of hoping he sees maybe 20, 22, 23 minutes tonight. Um, but, yeah, I mean, he's definitely in play because, you know, as good as Detroit, as big as Detroit is down low, they haven't been great defensively. Exactly. Um, looking at some cheaper guys, I mean, it's a lot of tournament guys for me down here um, just because you're looking at guys like Serge Ibaka who don't have the, the – um, the best floor, but their ceiling is there. It's a decent matchup against the Clippers because they've really struggled against power forwards lately. Um, Abaka's kind of turned it around a little bit, but still has a much lower floor desired. I think the price is right for him, though, if you're going to pay for Ibaka. Yeah, I think so, too. I mean, he is cheap. He's below 6K in a decent spot, and you like getting exposure to that game. I think he's a cheaper way to do it. Exactly. If you can't afford Westbrook or Durant... I think the next best option would be Ibaka. Yeah, yeah, he's definitely the third tier guy there. Um, I mean, outside of that, I mean, you're looking at, at guys. Um, Dirk Nowitzki's been a safe cash game option. I don't mind him tonight. Um, outside of that, I just don't see a lot of guys here. Noel, if he plays solid tournament play. I think Dirk's price is also great at 5,800 on DraftKings. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he's. I don't see him having the big upside, but he's definitely a 30 fantasy point guy in that matchup. And um, just because power forward's pretty weak once you get down low. Exactly. Other than green, of course. Yeah. I think he's just going to be because power forward's so weak. He just becomes kind of a, an easy plug and play. Exactly. So if you're not going to pay up for Anthony Davis, I think green is probably the next best option. Yep. I'm with you there. Um, I mean, anyone else you feel worthy of mentioning? I'm looking lower. I don't – nobody I really like as a punt play. But, of course, with NBA, you got to be aware of the injuries. Yeah, definitely. Um, I guess there's one guy we can take a look at, Marvin Williams, um, 5,500, you know, a matchup against New Orleans. How did uh, I pass him? 
<laughs> they, I mean, he's been good, but I once again, I just I like Green, I like Dirk, I like them a little bit more. But Marvin Williams, because of the weakness of the slate, kind of been play for me. Yeah, I I loved Williams last time when I was doing research, and somehow I forgot to mention him here. Uh, anyone he else does have upside? Yeah, he does. We have seen it when he takes on a bigger offensive role, but the peripherals are always usually there for him. Exactly. Other than that, there's nobody else I'm really looking at. Yeah, me either. Um, looking at center, um, Jared Sollinger is questionable tonight. Um, you'd likely see Amir Johnson more um, in, that, in that lineup, um, shifting over. Um, and I really I think that's where they're going to go small ball tonight. I, there's no Olnick, there's possibly no Sollinger. They don't have a lot of size down low. You're looking at Drebko picking up some extra minutes. Um, that's just something to keep an eye on tonight. And then Okafor being out. Uh, we talked about that already. Yes, you. I did not know Sullinger was questionable. So if he's out, I think Amir Johnson gets a real nice boost in minutes. And he's at a great price point where he can easily exceed value. Yeah, I mean, you look, I mean, last time he played 31 minutes against Memphis, went 14, 9, and 4 with a block. Um, they're not a good rebounding team. They rank 24th, and they've struggled without Marcus all down there. So he would definitely be an intriguing play tonight uh, for basically like a punt play. Thank you for mentioning that injury news to me. <laughs> the only reason I know is just because I live in Celtics land, so I got the, the notification. Oh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> but um, there, Hassan Whiteside was questionable at the beginning of the day. Um, he's not anymore, so don't worry about him. He did have an illness. He's playing tonight. I like him a lot in tournaments. I'm a big fan of his. Oh, yes. Um I remember watching that game earlier in the season against Milwaukee. He destroyed Greg Monroe. He's just bigger and stronger than him. So for 8,400 with that huge upside we all know he has coming off the bench, I think he's a great play. Yeah, I like him a lot. Like you mentioned, 23 and 18, uh, two blocks against Milwaukee in the first meeting. Over the last five games, 16 and 13 with four swats per game. I mean, the guy's just... It's sick. I mean, the guy comes off the bench still, and he's just producing an insane fancy points per minute. He leads tonight's centers and starting fancy points per minute. So um, I like him a lot. I don't. I don't think a lot of people are going to be on him because I think Len and Howard and you like Drummond. I think people are, are going to talk about Drummond as well. Um, I think they're going to be the kind of the popular plays tonight. Yeah, you mentioned Len, fifty fantasy points in his last two games. The price is finally catching up to him, but at 6600 I still think he's a little too cheap. And the other guy that I really love tonight is Andre Drummond. I think a lot of people are going to sleep on him. He's at a nice price, especially on DraftKings. And we all know the tremendous upside Drummond has. Yeah, and that's a good that's a good point. The the price difference is pretty significant, seventy six hundred, just a thousand more than Len. I mean, that's kind of crazy to think about, um, especially with Drummond averaging sixteen and fifteen this season. And I could easily see a monster rebound night for him just because Dallas really struggles on the boards. But um, yeah, I'm, I like Drummond a lot tonight. I think he's a pretty safe play in all formats. It's a little expensive on on Fanduel, but I think DK uh, the price is definitely right. Yes, and. Len, I just can't stop staring at him. Yeah, he's been he's been so good. I mean, the Mints have been there. He's been playing the four. Uh, matchup against the Knicks on the back-to-back, I don't think it's terrible. I don't think it's great, but, I mean, I'm looking at that Miami game, and that's not a great matchup either, and he's still put up 12 and 13. Um, so I, I just think he's the guy. He's the guy for me tonight if you're paying down at center. Definitely. Um, looking a little lower, I don't – see anybody that catches my attention maybe al jefferson yeah and i'm pissed because last the last podcast i was like if jefferson can get five more minutes he would be in play for me because he was playing right around the 19 20 minute mark for the previous few games and got 26 Uh against minnesota and that was enough for him (laughs) to get over the bump he finally got that five minute bump and hopefully we see 26 minutes again from tonight because senders have killed new orleans this season and it was exactly a five-minute bump. I know. I either I predict the future. I'm just always one day late. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I definitely like Jeff there at that price tag. He's a solid matchup for him. Um, outside of that, I mean, it's basically him, Len, or Payne up for those big names. 
Exactly. Um, looking even lower, nobody really sticks out to me. No, I, yeah, I'm with you nobody. there. Tyson Chandler, back-to-back 29-point games. But I still think I prefer Jefferson over him. Um, yeah, at a similar, similar price tag. Or Len, for sure. Yeah, if yeah. If I'm taking team. anyone from the Suns, it's definitely him. So uh, I'm with you there. I think that's it. I think that's it at center. I don't see anyone else that I'm really taking a look at. Oh, that's pretty much for me, too. Yeah. Well, that's going to wrap things up here with the Mints to win it. Check out DailyFantasyCafe.com for all our great tools and content.